Hey Gender Queer Chat folks, this is Sam. It is Thursday, um, January 8th. Um, and this week's topic is surgery options and talking about age um, and how young is too young to do something about gender issues. So the first topic is surgery. And um, that was something that I struggled with for a while. Um, I was deciding between having a reduction or getting top surgery. And I made a whole video about it. Uh, you can check it out on my, uh, my video page, youtube.com slash videokidsam. It was basically a hard decision for me. And I, I went and saw Dr. Brownstein. And then I went and saw a reduction guy. And... Um, you know, went back and forth and kind of decided that for me, for right now, the best choice was a reduction. Um, not only because I could get it covered um, and top surgery is really expensive, but because um, in terms of how I am and my gender identity right now, uh, it makes the most sense. I um, really feel comfortable in being in between and my uh, gender is really fluid and if I had top surgery that's a very um, big not fluid choice um, in my mind. Even though I go back and forth about it I'm just not really ready uh, and that's okay and so I had my reduction and it went really well and I'm very 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 happy with it so far it's still pretty painful it was only um, a couple weeks ago, but I'm definitely pleased with my choice, and I don't even think I'm really going to have to bind. Um, I've got this special compression bra that I'm wearing uh, for a couple weeks, maybe a month or something, um, while it heals, and actually that does it, does the trick pretty nicely. So I'm pretty excited about not feeling like I have to bind. Um, not that I bind all the time, because um, it's pretty uncomfortable. But uh, the possibility of not having to is very nice. So that's my talk on surgery. And the other topic is how young is too young. And um, I went through, I keep articles and collect books about gender all the time. And I went back and found one from SF Weekly from July 2007. Um, and it is called Boy Girl Interrupted. Uh, children as young as nine years old are given drugs to block puberty as the first step in changing sex. Um, and I just wanted to read you guys some of it because it's totally interesting and really controversial. Uh, Boy Girl Interrupted. A new treatment for transgender kids puts puberty on hold so that they won't develop into their biological sex. Um, here's the picture. I feel like I'm um, reading to some little kids um, at the library, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Okay. The breast bud popped up about six months ago, and Marty knew something had to be done. It was the slightest of puckers, just on one side, so small you wouldn't even notice it through a t-shirt. Still, boys don't get breasts, and this, this had the unsettling potential to blow his cover big time. That's because Marty was born, by conventional measures of modern science, a girl. Marty has two X sex chromosomes, uh, like most females, and the hardware concurs. Yet ever since Marty's parents flew back from China in 1998 with their 11 month year old adopted baby, their daughter seemed to be programmed male. She refused dresses by the age of two and a half and mastered peeing while standing by three. She would identify herself as a girl only when grilled. When Marty was about six, doctors said she was no tomboy. She seemed to fit the diagnosis of gender identity disorder, GID. And though dubbing it a disorder whips up a maelstrom of controversy, the basic sentiment is this. Not only feeling an intense discomf discomfort with one's biological gender, but also feeling profoundly, compellingly like the other. 
Enrolled in a new school last year as a boy, where the only staff knew, where only the staff knew otherwise, the nine-year-old passed without a hitch. But the days when the only outward markers of gender lies in haircuts, clothes, and personality only last so long. Deep inside Marty's brain, a time bomb known as the hypothalamus waited to stage a hormone-armed mutiny. So when the bud appeared, his Bay Area parents hustled him to an appointment with an endocrinologist at Children's Hospital and Research Center in Oakland, because now, due to the effort of a small but growing number of doctors around the world, something actually could be done about emerging puberty. The endocrinologist agreed that Mother Nature was revving up, preparing to take Marty the way of trainer bras, Tampax, and as his parents and doctors predicted, increasing distress to his body as it developed into a sex that to him seemed a cruel trick of birth. The changes would make living as a boy impossible in the present, and he'd potentially face scarring surgery to remove unwanted breasts down the road. What's more, the upsurge in estrogen would slow and stop his growth, making it harder for him to ever pass as male. Of course, that's if Marty would end up living as a man. As boyish as Marty is, no one could know for sure. But in the present, nature could be tricked. If they all agreed, Marty would never have to develop into a woman. It was time to put puberty on hold. The preferred drug for the controversial process is Lupron Depot. Slogan for the pediatric version, pause the child within. It's potent, yet irreversible, and incredibly expensive. And for transgender kids, backed by increasingly supportive parents, it's ushering in a new era. Boys who've always known that they were girls won't get beards or deep voices. Girls who feel like boys will never have to grow breasts or tinker with a tampon. Long prescribed to temporarily stave off puberty in kids who start developing too young, the drug blocks the brain's release of the compound that triggers the chain of hormonal reactions, body mutations, and, mu and moody angst. Now an unknown number of doctors in the Bay Area, the country, and across the globe are following the lead of a fledgling treatment pioneered at a Dutch clinic that sparked debate in medical and ethical circles alike. The Dutch clinicians are suspending kids in physical childhood to buy them time to decide if they wish to begin the sexual reassignment process. If so, after a few years of continued psychological monitoring, they can start hormones to induce an opposite sex puberty. If not, the teen can stop taking the periodic Lupron injections and appear to, de and appear to develop normally, as kids treated with the drug for early puberty have for years. Advocates say that the treatment saves kids the anguish of continuing to develop into a gender they don't identify with, reducing the risk of everything from depression to self-mutilation to suicide attempts, as well as later surgeries to undo what Mother, what mother Nature has done. By sitting out the irreversible changes of biological puberty, patients will pass more easily as the target sex, protecting them from, from potential discrimination and even violence. Put delay and puberty in the same sentence, add a, little un add a little understood condition like GID for which science still cannot pinpoint a cause, and, well, people start talking. Some doctors say that kids need to experience puberty to truly know if they're, in, if they're misplaced in their bodies, and warn that the long-term side effects of diverting Mother Nature's root are still unknown. Yvette Stork, who was born as male, was one of the first transgender patients at the Amsterdam Gender Clinic to start puberty delaying treatment at age 12, followed by estrogens at age 16, and multiple sexual reassignment surgeries at age 18. So this is age four, age eight, age 12, and age 16. I think that respecting how the child feels is an important first step and I don't know to what degree um, going on medicine at a young age is a good idea or not um, but I certainly find it interesting and I'm curious to know what other people think uh, I haven't really come to a conclusion yet and I guess the last thing that I wanted to mention was that um, I have worked on a film about gender variant and gender fluid kids uh, which I think is really interesting and I think it's definitely an issue to be discussed because I don't know how much research has been done and it's an important issue uh, for kids happiness and growing up happiness. Well, that's all I've got I think for today um, Hope everybody's doing great in their 2009 so far 
and I'll see you guys next week.